in terms of if you're looking for quick the quickest and the easiest solution is the e-levy route mm -hmm. because that's the easiest way to get then the quick fiscal cash right because you can start taking the monies right and then if you had to look at other alternatives then it will be slow grinding right so if it's through trade for example that's a homegrown solution where you're now boosting um, local production encouraging that we eat more made in ghana products mm -hmm. putting people put start putting heavy taxes on imported goods as a way to stimulate um local consumption mm -hmm. then that's slow grinding and that will require the government will have to cut back spending on certain like maybe lifestyle so certain whether it's um on um maybe fuel or the kind of cars they use they will have to change a lot of things mm -hmm. the thing is that when you want to now maintain a particular lifestyle on a low budget it becomes difficult. So um, you start touching things that may be, may be sensitive. So, and because touching the e levy, I get the idea, but then now you are touching that's private sector. Because what you're doing is that you're with the people, people already pay taxes, right? Um, but the cost of living is high. That's what people are, are not understanding. What 100 cities could do last year cannot do this year. Mm. You know, what a thousand could do before. What is a thousand cities these days once you break the thousand it's worth nothing and so we, we have to also be honest as, as to what the cost of living is to even be able to say oh if you are spending this amount of money a day you should be able to like you are bringing um in terms of like you should be able to pay the e-levy right because you are bringing in some money and if you look at the estimate of how much you're expecting what five point something billion mm -hmm. ghana cities mm -hmm. um it is not even enough to cover what um the expenditure like the, so it's, it's the mid-year budget that we're going to actually see our we have debt and then we have bills to pay i mean there's a bills to pay we have people that we have to pay a very a, a very um intense payroll right and so you have all of these things that are there and it's like the realization that we need to change our lifestyle right you now as a state so. um why do i get the impression is though the country is broke but I remember I said this a couple of months, was it a couple of months? I think it's sometime this year when I said it and it sounded too honest, but it's like, see, finance and economics are like a science, right? You cannot lie about numbers. It's not like sociology where I can come and say, or, or some programs where I can come and sugarcoat something. Mm. If someone is sick, they're sick. The economy, we are in a crisis. There was already a global crisis, mind mm. you. Um, the high unemployment has been predicted to extend to even maybe the next three to four years because there have been so many global shifts. The supply chain has been disrupted. The WTO had a meeting yesterday. Mm -hmm. Actually, it's even planning a stakeholder meeting because the supply chain is affecting smaller countries like us. So the global trade, because of COVID, things are happening from whether the shortage of, of containers to um, these freight companies charging excess money. So we have all of those global issues there. Mm -hmm. then Ghana comes in to the context, right? So, so it's like being broke is just, you know, being broke is just the reality of what's happening on a bigger scale. Mm -hmm. But the reality also is that we don't have money, but we are also not living like people who don't have money. Is this to say that we're okay until COVID came? And is this to say that we didn't see this coming? No. So, okay. So the first thing is we're okay until COVID came. No, we weren't okay, but we found easy ways to deal with the problem. So this is not even an MPP thing. And, and that's the one of the things that people don't understand. This is accumulated years mm -hmm. of not finding substantial or proper solutions to generating revenue as a state. So you know how, imagine if you have a house and maybe you have not been taking care of the electricity wire or something, mm. and it's been happening for years, but you move out and then the tenant comes in. Mm -hmm. They also keep replicating the same idea, but maybe while they are there, the thing collapses. They're like, okay, you carry the brand. The tenant feels like when I came in, I already had problems. Mm. Oh, it's not my fault. So yes, it's not completely your fault, right? Mm -hmm. But it's years of a very bad system okay. of, of, of mismanagement of funds. So in terms of getting quick, yes. I mean, between the two of us, yes. let's agree using the word quick cash because right. we've got some bills to pay right. in terms of raising these quick mm -hmm. cash is the e-levy the only option i mean we've got um so much so recently the soes recorded a huge amount of debt mm -hmm. in there mm -hmm. if we wanted to go back to collect monies that we're supposed to be collecting and all of that mm -hmm. do you think that we'll still need the e-levy is the e-levy the only <laughs> way to get quick cash it's not the only way but the thing is then it's going to require heavy adjustments that are we willing to make and one of them if let's say for example we go to the imf the first thing the imf will do will say what cut expenditure the very thing that we don't want to do we are spending on things that are not necessities for people 
who are at where we are at. Mm. So INF comes and will tell you cut expenditure. That's the first way to get quick, to get quick revenue. Okay. Because there are monies that we are spending now that we shouldn't be spending. If, if we wanted to cut expenditure, right? Okay, you want to help us. What do you think we can do? Expenditure. I get the impression that we talk about the e levy not being. Uh, I mean, Professor Bogwin, if we get to talk to him, says that the e levy is very regressive. Right. It's not an option. It's not the way to go. No. We should look at the homegrown uh, um, solutions. solutions right. But and then again, I'm getting the impression that the homegrown solutions will take some time for us to see the proper. And that's one thing we don't like, right? Because mm -hmm. it's like. Um, that's why every time a government comes to power, they have to tell you what you want to hear then and then, right? Mm -hmm. There and then. Even, let's say, even with a free education system mm -hmm. right now, not everybody has to be benefiting from it. Because the reality is that we can't afford that. Okay. So we could cut back spending where we are now looking at it on a merit base, where those who genuinely cannot afford, just so we can even raise money from, from there, mm -hmm. one of them, right? Is that one aspect will be that. So if we looked at, in cutting expenditure, we looked at education. Yes. would have to have a clear cut mm -hmm. of who can afford. Yeah. But that's, that's happening already because we still have parents taking their children to private schools. Right. Um, oh, but then um, how many people are in the private school system? Honestly, when it comes to very good, even high school education in Ghana, it's, it's government schools, mm -hmm. right? So we have to look at people who can afford these, these monies and then that's giving an education is one aspect you're looking at now looking at government expenditure payroll right there are some redundant you know institutions that are there or agencies that are government-based that don't have to be 